Welcome to another podcast of the Prodigal Son. You know, we've been talking about the Luke 15, and I want to continue on. The Lord just continues to tell me to back up, back up. But first, my prayers for all of us, the world that we live in, for all of us, my prayers come out of Paul's prayers for the Ephesians. Ephesians 1.15 says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope He has given to those He called, His holy people, who are His rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe Him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated Him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now He is far above any ruler, or authority, or power, or leader, or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the Creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from His glorious unlimited resources, He will empower you with inner strength through His Spirit. Then Christ will make His home in your hearts as you trust in Him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong, and you may have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide how long, how high, and how deep His love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able, through His mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to Him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I thank God that He has opened my eyes to His love. And I pray today that the world's eyes would be opened. You know, I pray that every day for myself also. You know why? Because I want my eyes to always, to always be concentrated, be focused on His love and His mercy and to see more of it every day. I thank God for that opportunity that He has given me to to know His love. And that's my prayers for the world that we live in today, that, that the world would see and understand just how much God loves them. Glory to God. Let's see what God's Word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for your word. Guide me. Use me for your honor and your glory. Lord, touch my mind, touch my mouth. Help me be the light that I should be in this world that we live in. Lord, I praise you and I thank you for all you're doing in this podcast. Lord, I praise you for the partners and the, and the people that, that, that support this podcast to help us send your word out. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over them today, a hundredfold return on everything that God, that they sow into this ministry. Lord, I praise you and I thank you for all you're doing. All you have done and all you're going to do. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. You know, we've been in Luke 15 for the last couple of days. Three days, I think. No, maybe just two. But anyway, (laughs) the Lord has dealt with me to back up again and start with the 13th verse of Luke 15. So Luke 15, 13. It's, it says, and not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, 
and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. Now I want to talk to you about something today. And that is, don't go to the world. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't expect the world to be easy on you. Don't go to the world. This young man, and I'll talk more about it tomorrow, but this young man, he, uh, when he, when he became in want, instead of, instead of going home, going to his father, he went to the world. And I'll talk more about how he, how he got in this position to start with tomorrow. But, but today we want to talk about what, what he's seen and understood. Now, there's not a doubt in my mind if you go through this, this scripture, you see that this young man thought he had messed up beyond help. Because he when, he, when he finally came to himself, what we were talking about a couple of days ago, he, 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 he had decided in his own heart that he was going to go home and be a servant for the rest of his days. He didn't expect his father to accept him back into his home and to love him like the son that he was. But he looked to the world. Don't expect the world to be easy on you. Now I've I've I went through a lot of what this young man went through, not materially, but spiritually. When I came when I came back to the Lord and and asked him to forgive me, I I was in such a dire strait spiritually, bankrupt spiritually. Had the world had drawn everything that it could out of me. That had to do with God. I ha- I had went that far, but the but the funny thing of it was, the wonderful thing, which I should say, that about this whole situation of mine, when I come home, God didn't expect me to grovel at His feet, and when I read this scripture, I understood that He didn't expect me to grovel at His feet. He loved me. He never brought up my past. A lot of people did. <laughs> a lot of people won't, won't ever let you forget your past. But God, he, he, don't, want, he, don't, he don't care about your past. He, he, re- care, he cares about your repentance. And when you repent, it's over with him. And there's there'd be a lot of people do it would be do them good to do the same thing about themselves, let alone anybody else. But what I want you to understand is this young man, he went to the wrong place. He when he began he when he be, began to be in want, instead of going home to a loving father, he ran to the world expecting them to help him. And all this, all the world done was stuck him out in the field to starve, feeding animals that, that uh, his whole, his whole uh, race of people wouldn't even, wouldn't dare eat. Do you understand? It says he would have gladly eaten the husk that he was feeding to those pigs. And and when you when you when you grasp what this young man was going through, uh, you know, he 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 didn't have to unnecessarily going to. He didn't have to go that place. He didn't have to, and he finds that out later. But this message is for someone that I don't want you to have to go through what I went through what this young man went through. I want you to see and understand that there is, there is love and mercy and grace. And, and, and when you 
uh, come to understand that and realize just how much you're worth to him and just how much he cares for you. See, you read Mark, uh, uh, Luke 15, 11 through 24, and it talks about it. And I'm not going to get into it because tomorrow I'm going to back up again and, 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 and show you what got this young man out into the world to start with. But when he came home, he was expecting to be a servant, a servant, a hired servant. He said, how many hired servants does my father have that have plenty to eat? And he said, I perish with hunger. He came home expecting to be one of those servants. And I've said this before, but uh, in, in Jewish, the law back, you know, during the law, the I have been told, I don't know, I've not looked it up and, and studied it, but, I, you know, it come from a good source. I forget who even told me. I may have read it from somebody, but uh, that... That tells me that the the source told me that the law gave this father the right to kill this son for doing what he had uh, done and going off and wasting his living and embarrassing the family. But did he? The Bible says that he ran. And that's another thing in Jewish culture that men didn't do. Men didn't run. And and Jesus said that this this man ran and fell on this young man's neck and kissed him and 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 loved him, give him what he was needing, <laughs> and that was life, nourishment, food, shelter. Now not only did he give him the necessities of life, but he gave him. A place in that family that the boy thought that he didn't deserve. Do you see what I'm saying? There's millions upon millions upon millions of people that have went to the world for help. They've went to the world for satisfaction and found themselves in want because the world sucked everything, every bit of life out of them, left them for dead. And and when you when you come to see and understand what I'm talking about, you'll come to see and understand that that if you will come to the Father, come to your heavenly Father through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Come home expecting good things come to god expecting good things see this young man wasn't expecting anything he was he was expect he was expecting to be put in the barn and live with the animals for the rest of his days but what did he get he got love and mercy and restored to his rightful place as a child in that family At that just oh it thrills me when I read this and think about how much God loves me, how much he loves you. And and when you come to understand that love, that love that I really can't grasp, you know, you've heard me say it over and over and over on this podcast that God loves the abortion doctor as much as he loves the babies they're killing. But I can't grasp that through my human being, through, through my carnal uh, mind. I can understand it uh, because God's Word, you know, talks about His undying love and, and how much we're worth to Him. And, you know, there's, there's Scripture after Scripture that talks about God's love for us. But for me to grasp the fact that God loves a serial murderer that kills innocent children for a living, 
as much as he loves the innocent children that the doctor is killing, I just can't get a hold of that. And and I couldn't do it. I can't put them in that category. I can love them and pity them for the place that they're in. But as far as, uh, you know, being having that kind of love in my heart for those type people, I just don't. I, I strive to have, and I do love them, but I can't love them like I would an innocent child. It just, you know, I don't know. I just, I got off on something that really not, not uh, has 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 anything to do with what I'm talking about now. But it's really. People have that kind of outlook about God because they make God human when he's not. God is love. And and when you can understand that, you can understand how God can love you that much and care for you that much and realize and come to understand that, that he's for you, not against you. And when this young man came home, he came home knowing. Well, he didn't come home knowing. He came home and found out how much God loved him. And when he came home and found out how much he loved him, then he realized what he had left. He had left a a, a family, a father that would have given anything to get him to stay. Don't go to the world. When you you look around and you find yourself in need and want, don't look to the world for help, for satisfaction. Look to the Father. Look to your Lord and your Savior, Jesus Christ. You may say, well, I'm not born again. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, that's the easy part. Romans 10 and 9 said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. And then you can come to understand and know the love that God has for you. Come to know that. Come to realize that today. Glory to God. I thank God for the opportunity that he give me to know and understand just how much he loves me and this world. Glory to God. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today. Don't go to the world for help. The world can't satisfy. Come to him. If you are born again, get in his word. Oh, let God's word minister to you. And start believing God's word above all opinion. Glory to God. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today and watch him change your life forever. Glory to God. I thank God for this opportunity. If you're listening to this podcast, go to our website. Get in touch with us. Share these podcasts on your social media so others can can come to realize just how much God loves them. Come to realize just how much He cares for them. Allow allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you how you need to to share these things and, and help people. Take what you, what, what you learn on this podcast and give it to somebody else. Tell them just how much God loves them. Tell them what you have learned and come to understand on this podcast and that, about God that religion had kept you from knowing. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com. I want to take just a minute and thank all the partners. Partners, thank you. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return on everything that you sow into this ministry. I thank you 
that you are faithful in sowing into God's kingdom to help us put God's word out all over the world free of charge. Glory to God. If you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do today to sow into his kingdom. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.